Father, we just thank you for this, another opportunity to minister to these, your precious sheep. I thank you that revelation knowledge of your word will flow freely from heaven, uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. None of me, all of you. Holy Spirit, speak through my vocal cords. Think through my mind. I ask that you bring wisdom and knowledge and good understanding. I ask right now for strength, the spirit of might may it be upon me and within me to deliver this word with accuracy, with boldness, with simplicity and understanding as well. We thank you for the spirit of counsel. Thank you for the spirit of the knowledge of the fear of the Lord as well. And we thank you right now, Father, and we give you praise. We thank you for it. We thank you for it. Great wisdom, great understanding. I pray for every person under the sound of my voice. I pray that it is well with them. I speak blessing over their households, over their minds right now. Anoint their ears to hear. I ask this today. Bring clarity and understanding. Let them see what you need for them to see today. To hear what you need for them to hear today. And to respond to it as well. We give you praise in advance. We call every need of this ministry met. We call every need of each, and every of each and every member, partner, and supporter met. We thank you for our new facilities paid for. We thank you for our new vehicles, our new uh, church equipment paid for. We thank you for the vision being manifested. We arise and shine for our light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon us. We thank you for divine favor, that Father, you give us favor with those in authority, those, Father, that can change policies, rules, regulations, and laws, that they will be turned in our, for our advantage and for our good. We thank you for approvals in areas we need to be approved in. We thank you for it right now. We thank you for acquisition of land and property now. We give you praise for it. We thank you for the systems, the strategy, and the structure that you've given unto us. And Father, we implement and we see expedited growth, expansion, and increase in the name of Jesus. Yeah, we thank you for it, Father. We call in people from the north, the south, the east, and the west. That, Father, that you are bringing people, Father, prompt, diligent, dedicated, committed, sold out, tithing, on fire, anointed, Bible-believing, devil-stomping believers. We thank you, Father, right now you're bringing people game changers that, that will help and assist us to fulfill this mandate. We thank you, Father, right now that you're also bringing the poor, the sick, the depressed, and they shall be healed, set free, and delivered. We thank you, Father, that you're we're bringing them in, raising them up, and deploying them, sending them out into the earth, Father, to get the job done, to establish your kingdom. Now, Father, this is an assignment. This is a different assignment. So I ask right now, like never before, anoint my tongue to deliver this word today. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Let me get into this. Let me get into this. Let me get into this. Um, as God has been dealing with me about, we've been talking about the Nehemiah Project. Um, there's a lot that's coming out. There's a lot that's coming to me as a result of this. Um, the Spirit of God had dealt, has dealt with me about this for several years, about this book even studying the book of Nehemiah and going through it. And, and I've had some study in it and some, some things from it, but the more I'm going through it and I'm not rushing, I gotta take my time with this, the more I'm seeing just how big this is and why he's telling me to do it and why he's been telling me to do it. Um, and I'll explain some things today. I'm gonna start here. Um, I've shared last Sunday and then this past Thursday about some things, but I want to start here today. Um, I, I read the scripture out of, I think it was out of Proverbs. It says that hope deferred makes the heart sick. But when your desire come, it's a tree of life. So a deferred hope and something that's been deferred over a period of time that has not happened and has not manifested will cause you to lose lose heart and faint. That's why the Bible says, don't faint. Um, don't, don't you faint in doing what's right. Cause you're going to reap. If you don't faint, give up or quit. So don't faint. Don't give up. Don't, don't faint in doing the right thing. Don't give up in doing the right thing. 
Sometimes we need to make adjustments to get things done. And sometimes more insight, more knowledge, more development will cause those things. And even us employing our faith properly and engaging our faith will cause these things to happen. Now, as I look at the book of Nehemiah, and today I'm going to talk a little bit about the power of connection as well. But before I get into that, I want to deal with why is Nehemiah so important? I want to, I'm going to kind of, this is the kind of the nerd in me when it comes to scripture and study. I love church history um, and seeing how things work and because you, you learn from clues of others and you begin to see even patterns of how God does things. And so all scripture is given to us for reproof and correction. And so we want to pull out principles and pull out some things. Now, Nehemiah was a layman. He wasn't a priest like Ezra. He wasn't a prophet like Malachi. He served the Persian king in a secular position before leading a group of Jews to Jerusalem in order to rebuild the city walls. Now, Nehemiah's expertise in the king's court equipped him adequately for the political and physical reconstruction necessary for the remnant to survive. Now, this, this, this is something, even as I started seeing this and reading this, reading this, automatically it started coming up. God has, maybe God has been positioning many of you in places and positions in the earth, on your jobs, in organizations, because he was developing you and preparing you for an assignment he's about to give you. And so all of this time you thought even complaining on the job and, and wondering why you had to do what you had to do and wondering why do I got to learn, go to these meetings and why I got to learn all of this stuff that along the way you've been picking up stuff that God is saying all of this time you thought it was a waste of time, but I've been depositing things in you for what's getting ready to happen now in you and for you. So I need you to go ahead. So because if you understand this today, you're going to go back to work. You're going to go back to your place with a different mindset now with a re-energized knowing that I may not be here always, but while I'm here, I'm going to do this as unto the Lord. I'm going to acquire what I need to for kingdom purpose. All right, let's, let's go. Under Nehemiah's leadership, the Jews withstood opposition and came together to accomplish their goal. Nehemiah led by example, giving up a respected position in the palace for hard labor. Watch this in a politically insignificant district. Now, this is something he gave up a prestigious position to go work somewhere and to build somewhere where it wasn't sexy. It wasn't beautiful. It wasn't the glam job. It wasn't the thing that many people would work towards, but he saw a need and we already established this. When he saw the need, his heart was pricked. He developed a, a um, um, empathy and sympathy and compassion. That's the word compassion for the rebuilding of this wall. Now you got to understand something. Well, I, I'm not going to get to that point just yet. So watch this. Cause, cause this is, this is, um, he partnered with Ezra who also appears in this book to solidify the political and spiritual foundations of the people. So we got to understand something. See, see Ezra was this priest, but now watch this. The priestly, when we think priestly, we think spiritual, but then at the same time, um, Nehemiah worked in the political realms because he was the King's cupbearer. So he understood how the king's offices worked and functioned. And so a lot of times what's happening is we call it the sacred and the secular, or this is what the Bible talks about kings and priests. We talk about people in positions of power, whether it's in the, the, the religious, the spiritual, secular, the um, spiritual realm, but then in the secular, what we call secular realm, but it's still the Lord, the earth is the Lord's in the fullness thereof in the governmental structures and superstructures and systems in the earth. And he says, we're going to bring the two together to get things accomplished and to get things done. This is, this is so important. This is so important. Let's just, 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 let me, let me just lay this foundation. So he partnered with Ezra. So, okay. To solidify this 
and Nehemiah's humility before God. Because we see him moving in intercessory prayer in chapters one through nine in the book of Nehemiah, provided an example for the people. He did not claim glory for himself, but always gave God the credit for his successes. So the first thing he did, he had compassion, but he now began to intercede about the problem. He began to go before God and say, God, what is it that you would have me to do about this thing? I'm praying about this thing. And many of us have spent a lot of time praying, but now it's time for implementation of the plan that he's revealed and released. And so when you go in, you even go into your prayer time strategically, being specific in what you're praying about. Because God has given us all this power. He's showing us who we are in Christ. Because when God told me about dealing with the book of Nehemiah, he also told me it's time for you to start studying the book of Acts and start going through it and understanding because this was the acts of the apostles after they were empowered by the Holy Ghost. Now, some people said they call it the book of the, the acts of the Holy Ghost through the people that he filled and came upon. And so now we need to see how do we take this power and now go and invoke change. So as we lay hands on the sick, the same power to lay hands on the sick and to see them recover is the same power that we can use that will come upon an individual like in the book of Daniel and cause people's their intellect to be heightened to solve problems in the earth that God's kingdom, God said, I want to invade my kingdom in the earth. So I need people with a kingdom mindset because kingdom mindset will produce kingdom partnerships that you'll connect with people who are not like you, who are strong in areas that maybe you're weak in and that you're strong in and they're weak in, but I've called you to come together for a common goal to get my will done. So you are gonna have to get rid of your pride to start connecting with people to get this thing accomplished because there've been too many private kingdoms being elevated and God said enough with that mess. There are kingdom collaborations that I'm about to bring together to finally get this thing done. Okay. All right. Some of you may not have big resources, but you got big vision and God will bring you in connection with the people with the big resources because they don't have the vision, but they got the money and they just wait for somebody to show up and to leave the charge so they can fund the vision. That's part of a king's job is to fund the vision of the priest. Okay. Come on. Come on. Come on. Holy Spirit. All right. Come on. Now watch this. <laughs> now, what's 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 the big idea here in, in Nehemiah? Nehemiah recorded the reconstruction of the wall of Jerusalem. This was Judah's capital city. Together, he and Ezra, who led the spiritual revival of the people, also directed the political and religious restoration of the Jews in their homeland after the Babylonian captivity. This is a powerful statement here. Not only there was revival, we always preach in the church settings about revival, but do you know why you're being revived? Do you know what revival is coming for? You're just thinking revival in one aspect, but God is saying, I need you to broaden your horizon because revival can mean many things that I'm bringing a fresh wind and a fresh fire for things to be established in the earth that I've been trying to get done all along. You just trying to come together in a service and now all of y'all get excited. You said the fire of God fell and that's awesome and that's great. But why is fire coming? Why is the anointing manifesting? Because the anointing manifests to remove burdens and to destroy yokes. And so when you come out of the presence dressed, what are you dressed for? You're dressed for service. You're dressed for action. Okay. Now watch this. <laughs> Nehemiah's life provides a fine study on leadership. He overcame opposition from outsiders as well as his personal internal turmoil. See, you've been dealing with stuff. See, he ain't not only had opposition from the outside, but he had opposition from the inside because he was dealing with himself 
internally. And that's what a lot of people are dealing with. Internal turmoil, what is trying to stop your forward progress and movement. And because you got to realize that greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. And God has given you an assignment and he's giving you not with the assignment. He's giving you the tools and the equipment and the giftings to now fulfill the assignment. But if you don't believe in you and you are now dealing with self-doubt, lack of confidence, lack of boldness, don't understand your identity. This is why God told me to go teach my people who they are so they can begin to rise up in every sphere of influence in the earth that you are anointed. This is how you tap into that anointing. This is how you now begin to activate the anointing of God on your life. This is how you partner with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will bring the word of wisdom, word of knowledge and discerning of spirits, not just for a church service, but while you in a boardroom and he'll show you stuff. He'll give you the negotiation skills. He'll tell you what to say to the person across the table from you. He'll show you as a judge how to rule in your seat of authority in the court system so that you won't lock up somebody prematurely and the Holy Spirit will reveal to you what's happening. I'm talking about all this kind of stuff. He's trying to invade everything. But now, if we don't have priests who know how to now interact with kings, and so now we don't know how to come together, you got to start learning how to talk the language of the king, even from a priestly standpoint, and then two, to articulate what thus saith the Lord. I'm talking about now speaking truth to power. I'm talking about getting in spaces where your voice is going to be heard, where you will have a seat at the table. Why are you in the boardroom meetings? Why are you taking minutes? And God has you strategically placed there to hear the heart and the secrets behind the doors. Ooh, Lord, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. You think you just working there just to work there. You're the gateway. You're the gateway to what God wants to do. Now watch this, watch this, now watch this. He dealt with this inner turmoil as well as outsiders and he exercised his administrative skills and his strategy to use half the people for the building while the other half kept watch for the Samaritans who were under this guy by the name of Sanballat who threatened to attack him. And we'll see this in, um, in, in, you'll see it in Nehemiah four through seven, chapters four through seven. As a governor, Nehemiah negotiated peace among the Jews who were unhappy with the Persian taxes. So what, look at what God is doing. He's dealing with taxes. He's dealing with political stuff. See, some of y'all never even thought about getting into these spaces because it was foreign to you because all you focused on are what you're personally going through. And God is saying, watch, sometimes Satan is coming to keep attacking you in these areas so that you are so focused on your internal attacks and turmoil and situation that it's not, it is keeping you from really getting out and making a mark that can never be erased in somebody's life. Okay? Now this is, now, he also, Nehemiah also exhibited, I'm just giving you some background here. He exhibited a steadfast determination to complete his goals. Accomplishing those goals resulted in a peep, watch this, in the people being encouraged, renewed, and excited about their future. See, that's why we started with the whole hope deferred makes the heart sick. When you begin to set goals and accomplish them, it begins to bring life back to the community, life back to yourself. Whereas you saw so much that didn't happen, now you'll start celebrating what starts to happen because you're planning for your success. You're planning to overcome. You're planning to be better. You're setting the goal. See, hope is a goal setter. But your faith now engages what you're hoping for to accomplish that thing. And so your faith is going to be steadfast and unmovable. And faith does not go by what you see, but what you believe. Because now what you see may not match up to where you believe in the go. That's why you have to keep your faith engaged for the process. And now even trust the Holy Spirit to help you in your planning. Because you know this is with a, a divine plan by the Holy Spirit that he is now strengthening you to encourage you stick with the plan and you will 
see the breakthrough and the turnaround. This is why we even confess where our favorite confessions that we have spirit like, um, uh, was it Con uncommon breakthroughs, even in the midst of um, impossibilities that we have supernatural turnarounds and miraculous breakthroughs, supernatural turnarounds. See, when you understand a supernatural turnaround, sometimes part of that can be a quick turnaround, but sometimes it can be God is supernaturally infusing you. See, this is where the spirit of might comes in. Well, not only, this is why Paul prayed that you be, watch this, strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man so that you can be endued with strength and power to endure the process of the change that's taking place because he's giving you the plan, but he's going to give you the strength to endure the plan so that you can have the hope in your final outcome. Glory to God. Yeah. Whew, come on, come on, Holy Spirit. <laughs> oh, man. Now watch this. I, I love this. I love this. So people began to be excited about the future excited about the future because they saw something they saw they came together to get a job done to get something accomplished and as i begin to sit and, and preparing for this today that i begin to see people what is it that god may have you what job may he have you doing right now that you've been acquiring skills and so you're trying to figure out watch this this is why you got to stay connected because when you stay connected then you begin to identify how you can help the overall all goal, but you got to understand the goal. So when God told us, he says, okay, I want you to start this work. I want you to go ahead as we manifest the love of God through, um, uh, act of goodness and kindness, our goal. See, that's outreach. When you manifest God's love through act of goodness and kindness, what are ways that we can actively show goodness and kindness to people in meeting the needs of people internally and externally? How can we do this? Come on, now the creativity of God kicks in. Let's do this, let's do that, let's pay for this, let's meet people here, let's support here. What can we do? Let our voice be heard with what we have. Let us show God that we're faithful, even being. Now, you, okay, okay, so much running through me, I gotta settle down. Because as I was also seeing this, this took me to the five and the two talent and the one talent man. That God was like, a lot of times we preach on the five talent man being that five talent because you got to understand who God is. And I remember hearing this man of God explain it like this. This thing hit me like never before. It was, a, it was, it seemed like a simple truth. But when I looked at it, it was like, yeah, that's exactly the point. He said this, then this is his, 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 his rendition of it, his recollection. He was reading about the five, the two, and the one talent man, very prominent minister. I won't even share his name. I'm not even going to mention that. Because I don't always just take what somebody says and just share it, but I thought this was very important for what I'm saying right now. He said, the Holy Spirit says, I'm more capitalistic than socialistic in what I'm doing, if you see in here in this scripture. He was like, what? He said, what? He was like, no, Lord, because you would think, because we always think Jesus of being the more socialistic than capitalistic. He says, if you look at that account in the book of Matthew 25 with the five, the two, and the one talent, he took from the one that had the one and gave to the one who was producing the five because faithfulness in God's eyes is multiplication and productivity. If you're not producing, I'll take from the one who ain't doing nothing and give it to the one who's doing something. See, when we say stuff like this, the rich keep getting richer and the poor keep getting poorer. And so sometimes, but Jesus did both because then you have the account of the good Samaritan. And so you see both sides in both hands. And then you have political parties who preach one side on one side or the other more than the other. But God says, wait a minute, I'm talking about both of them. Okay, I'm going to teach you now. See, see, when I start dealing with this, I'm going to start dealing with some stuff. Because if we, if, let me just, let's, let's look at it in the modern day. If you saw a person who was poor, and you see a person who's producing, got a business flourishing, one who ain't doing nothing with it, and they're both working for the same person. You got three people, three business owners, and I'm the owner of the company, but you got three managers of the company. If I take from the person who has the one and give it to the one who has the five, 
would you say I'm a good businessman or a bad businessman? Now, let me use this question. Would you say I'm a good person or a bad person? Because now if you look and have, have sympathy with the person that has the one, but he ain't doing his job right, and I take from him and give it to the one who has the five, because my job, when I left them, their job was to produce and to get more than what I left them with. How would you start thinking? No, I'm dealing with your thinking now. I'm dealing with your thinking. Because now, this is why we have our motto, changing the culture, igniting the passion, living a dream, because you change your culture by changing the mindset. See, when we think about God with certain things, I need you to start seeing all of these aspects of who God is so that we can make informed decisions and choices and know how to function in life because you're trying to figure out how come now I lost an opportunity and somebody else seemed like they got more in there doing the same thing I'm doing, but then you got to judge yourself and be self-aware and say, Lord, was I faithful to what you gave me? If I wasn't faithful to what you gave me, the principle is that I could even lose what I have and now somebody else gets it. So instead of complaining about somebody else getting it, maybe my job is to now increase my capacity to now begin to produce more and to do more. This is why I believe in giving out fish, but I believe in teaching you how to fish because in the beginning I need to give you the fish to give you strength so that you can now produce again. And so, but now ultimately I need you to produce so that you're self-sufficient, possessing enough to require no aid or support, but furnished in abundance for every good work and charitable donation. You see what I'm saying there? So now your mentality has to begin to change that we want to be producers and all of a sudden because we're so focused on consumption and being consumers that God is saying, I need you to start producing even some of the things you've been consuming. Okay, let's see, let me, let me. See, Nehemiah is full of some stuff. Nehemiah was a guy in the political space who connected with a preacher. Let me just make it plain. So he got spiritual, the political, the kingship, the priesthood come together to get this thing accomplished and to get it done. What is it? I know sometimes we complain about the politicians, but now we've been called even as a priest, even as a preacher, even as a prophet. I've been called to connect with these individuals because God, he's been dealing with me about getting in certain spaces. It's like, don't shy away from it. Because in the past, I would shy away from it because of just my lack of knowledge, my ignorance of it. And sometimes we shy away from things that we're ignorant about because we don't want to be seen as stupid. And so now God is saying, I got to put you in spaces and places so that you can start learning. But now watch this, not only learn, but to begin to bring your expertise in your area of your priesthood to the area of this political arena so that the two of you can come together to solve the problem, which is my kingdom agenda. Okay. You know why I'm so amped about this? I was just invited yesterday to a meeting of ministers and political figures to discuss problems. And sometimes something as simple as, and it was posed some questions. Who is your representative in your particular area? What are the major problems in your area? And so now you begin to think, what are the solutions to solving the problems in your area? Do you even know certain things? Are you aware? And when it came around to me and I made this statement, I said one of the biggest issues that I'm seeing and hearing everybody is ignorance. It's like sometimes we just don't know. And then you begin to hear people who come from one area and there was this woman there, bless her heart, older woman. And so she began to share some things. But then I began to hear uh, from a different perspective because you have people who think one way. But then sometimes if you don't watch it, it can be divisive because in order to build up one people, you feel like you got to bring down another group. And it was like, no, that's not the kingdom agenda. So as a priest in those spaces, I need to raise my voice and begin to teach them. That's not what the father's heart is. He wants all men. Jesus died for all men. I know you want to have a tendency to feel like he just died for you. Yeah, he died for you, but he died for the person across the aisle from you too. 
So you got to now say, God, grant me wisdom to even know how to properly engage and have conversation and know that God, because your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This ain't about my agenda. This is about heaven's agenda. So crown me with wisdom, compassion, and love to know how to articulate myself because I can disagree without being disagreeable, but now give me the words to begin to share to now get into these spaces and when I'm in these spaces and places. And I believe that God is going to have many of you do that now. Okay. Whew. Man, I feel a different thing. This is, this is something different, y'all. I, I feel a shift in a different arena, a different area. Now, I ain't called to run, be no politician, but I know in order to speak truth to power, I got to get in the room with the power. You, you see what I'm saying? Because then, too, you got to know how to navigate. You got to know how to talk in arenas. We've been learned, taught in church circles. We know how to talk church. But everybody out there don't talk church. You got to know how to articulate and engage and deal with people where they are. See, yeah, we still speak truth, but he told us to do it in love. How do you connect? How do you, you know, one of the greatest things that happened to me not too long ago is when I went back and started working in a secular environment because God showed me how to deal and interact and minister his truths in spaces that people don't even introduce God, don't bring them in. But God granted me favor because of the way that he anointed me to articulate and they were blessed because he, listen, we everywhere. We've been invaded spaces and places and people been waiting on it and people will come to me in private. Even leadership will say, can you give me the notes of what you just said? That was good. And people see it has to be exposed. See the anointing. Now watch this. If we just preach to anointed people all the time who used to it. But now we got to go into spaces where people who are so hungry for it. That it's a lifeline. People who don't know the first thing about seed time and harvest and the, the, the power of your words and the authority of the believer. Yeah, we preach and we get excited about it, but we walk in this authority to go do something with it. We got to do something. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> I, I'm telling you. What, what, is the, what, is, what is the main message that he's trying to get across us out of Nehemiah? What is one of, I, I'll say one of, the, one of the top messages is that the book of Nehemiah shows us the kind of significance or significant impact that one individual can have on a nation. Nehemiah served in a secular office using his position to bring back to the Jews order, stability, and proper focus on God. God uses all manner of people in all manner of places doing all manner of work. Now this is a question. Do you feel you must be in ministry in order to serve God? See, God is not limited by your vocation. I need you to be encouraged today. In fact, God has placed you where you are for a purpose. Have this attitude about your work moving from this day forward. God, what is it that you want me to do where I am with what I've been learning and what I've been receiving? I need you to go just like if you had a ministry engagement, you had to preach somewhere. Some people who preach understand this, that you spend time developing, building yourself up, getting ready for this preaching encounter or engagement. Do you do the same thing when you go to work? Oh, man, your mindset starts changing. So if this is your daily rhythm of seeking God as a lifestyle to be intimate with him, to now receive the download from heaven for your assignment for that day, listen, he may bring people across your path because you're ready to preach to him now. See, <clears throat> sometimes he'll give you who he'll give you moments to show you your inadequacy. So it'll push, push you to him. To say, I need you. So he'll make you, watch this, he'll have you encounter somebody that'll talk circles around you to make you feel foolish so that you'll get your face in the book and study now. So now the next time you're ready, see that done happened to me over the years. Encountering people like, dog, I should have been ready. But what it did, it made me go search the scripture. Then I started looking for people. 
to see, because I'm ready now. Because see, see, see your, your development develops a confidence and a boldness to engage now. It may start off scary. I know it'll be scary at times. I know it'll feel intimidating. You might feel intimidated sitting at a table with people who are more scholarly than you. I listen, I, I, I'll say it like this. I was at a table with somebody one time at, at a meeting at an event um, with some ministers were inviting and stuff. And I was invited to come and introduce myself to this person who's sitting right next to me. And there was another guy on the other side. And so they just talking all of this scholarly stuff that I had no knowledge of. So I felt a little inadequate. I wasn't even in the conversation, but I'm just listening. And then later on, it comes out in the news that one of the people who was sitting right next to me was under investigation for some stuff that they weren't supposed to be doing. And so it was like, and I'm like, whoa, thinking that you intimidated by this because you had head knowledge, but understanding the power of your character. See, God will start revealing stuff to you. Now, I believe, fortunately, I think charges were dropped and stuff on this individual. I'm, my prayer is not for the person to necessarily be exposed, but for repentance to take place if anything is going wrong and being done wrong, that he would have a change of heart. Because God will do that. He'll expose some of the repentant heart to take place too. So that, that, that's neither here nor there. But my thing is going into these new spaces and places that may seem uncomfortable, but God is getting you ready for it. Could it be that he's been developing you the whole time? But you got to start taking it seriously where you currently are and take advantage of the wisdom and the knowledge that you can receive. It could be something as simple as your job provides you leadership development. And as part of the thing is going to help you advance in the company, not realizing that God had you to learn Six Sigma because now he's going to take you from there into a ministry or to a place that's going to now build his kingdom that now you will take what you learn there and now bring it over here to edify his kingdom, to structure it, to get the proper system strategy and structure in place to carry the anointing anointing to remove burdens and to destroy yokes and to now set the captives free. I'm telling you, God is, I'm telling you, God is bringing people in skilled positions. I hear this skilled positions to be used for his glory. See skill and prayer can work hand in hand. Don't forsake one for the other or don't depend on just your skill set and know that God can give you, the Holy Spirit can give you wisdom beyond even what they taught you. But he'll take the skill and amplify it. OK. But watch this. So have this attitude about your work, whatever. This is out of Colossians 317. Whatever you do in word or deed. Do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through him to God, the father. Whatever you do, do it in the name of the Lord. Now, I'm going to end with this. That this is this is so important of how when Nehemiah began to go and remember, he went to the king. We talked about this and he told him, get king, give me give me documents so I can have passage. And because the, the, then also. Um, the uh, approval of the things that I need, the timber that I'm going to need to rebuild the wall. And so now as Nehemiah begins to go and share his vision with the people as he comes into that place. But think about this. This is what God is showing me. And it's like this. He went from a posh place, a luxurious place in the king's palace, working with the king to go amongst the quote unquote commoners. He sees a need. He sees a need in the different courts, in the different districts. And this began to happen to me even in the meeting yesterday that I began to hear a person who's going as a representative. Now, I don't know his complete belief system or whatever, but he was so knowledgeable of the needs and the things. I was like, man, this is good information. It was like, wow. And what it did, it ignited in me the vision that my wife has for the Mac, which is our uh, outreach center where health and human services, where we meet the needs of the community. And sometimes stuff like that says, watch this, what began to happen was my heart began to rise. And then she even, I talked to her, then we just, I just started thinking. Then she asked me, okay, what area is it in? And so, but it's like, cause he, God has shown her even the position or the place where it needs to be. And then she has a vision for this thing to go to different states. 
in different areas. Just think about the magnitude of that, that we're now the hub that meets the needs that we meet the need of how to train parents, how to be good parents. We show them proper nutrition because now even in the African American community, see some doctors say, now I'm not a physician, but I understand culture that sometimes it's so promoted that certain things are amongst African Americans. Sometimes the narrative is trying to be preached that because you're black, you're more susceptible to these diseases. And sometimes it comes across just the fact that you're black, that genetically you just gonna have this stuff. Some of it ain't genetics, it's culture. It's been how we've been raised to eat and consume stuff that causes high blood pressure, that causes diabetes, that causes all of this stuff. That if you just change your eating and change the culture of your home, then these things will start leaving. And now you change to another generation because your children been raised up in it same way financially. You ain't cursed. You just ignorant. Listen to what I'm saying. Myself included. There are things that you just begin to learn to do better to structure your family so that your children see a good man leaves an inheritance. Now, scripture also says of moral stability for his children's children, but also an inheritance is financial that I teach you the morals and the principles, godly values of how to live your life, but also how to handle the, this financial arena while you living on this planet to produce, because God wants us to produce because he wants us to be faithful and he wants us to be that five talent man. Now watch this, we, we look at the five talent, but don't look over the two talent, even though the two didn't have the same as the five, but he still doubled his. So he was still considered faithful, even though he didn't have as much as the five, but now he still was considered and counted faithful because he doubled what he had. He multiplied what he had. So just start focusing on multiplying what you have and you will be considered faithful. Doing more with what you have. So don't look at what you don't have. The two didn't look at the one with the five and say, man, how come you got more than me? You started out better than I did. So you, it seems like you have an advantage. So you so focused on that, that now you'll mismanage the two. So don't do that. Just focus on, hey, I can't change that. All I can do is start from where I am, work with what I have, begin to develop the action plan. See, these are the principles and begin to work it. And watch this, just like Nehemiah went and asked God for favor in the king's sight, begin to think. See, this is going to be the power of your thinking. Take time to write the vision and to make it plain. Make it plain so that those that read it can run with it. Because even as Nehemiah, he knew what he needed. Even before he went to God in prayer, he asked God specifically, I'm going to need favor with the king for him to approve this plan. And to give me what's necessary, the resources necessary to get the job done. Then he goes and finds the people because wherever there's vision, there's provision. And when God gives vision, he'll always give you help to get the vision accomplished and for it to succeed. He did not call us back here for us to fail at the assignment. See, when you know he's giving you a vision, then you know that success has to be attached to it, but you got to do it his way. You got to obey what he's telling you to do when he's telling you to do it because you might have a vision, but if you're lacking faith for that vision, then it's a hope deferred because it's a dream. You desire it, but never see it because you don't begin to develop the infrastructure around yourself to accomplish that thing. This is infrastructure time, people. This is time to get the job done and to say, okay, Okay, first things first, we're going to get this done, we're going to get that done, and we're going to celebrate God along the way. Whew, I feel something different in me and on me. I just, I'm in a different space. There is a shift this month. That I know, I know because there's a shift in me. Because when there's a shift in the leader, there's a shift in the organization. I feel something different on me, y'all. I, 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 I do. Hmm. And sometimes you got to push your way through your feelings into getting in the spaces and places you need to be in now. Push past your feeling 
I know, I know it may feel hard to do it. Push through it. You got to birth this baby now. See, Nehemiah connected with the hearts. If you look at chapter two verses, let's go real quick. Verse um, 17 and 18. And I'm going to show you that he connected with the hearts of the volunteers before asking them to sacrifice their time and energy. What is it? We're in chapter two, verse, I said 17, 18. He says, now I'm going to start. Yeah, 17. He says, but now I said to, to them, you know very well what trouble we are in. I'm reading this out of the New Living Translation. He says, Jerusalem lies in ruins and its gates have been destroyed by fire. Let us rebuild the wall of Jerusalem and end this disgrace. Then I told them about how the gracious hand of God had been on me and about my conversation with the king. He told them what the Lord did for him. They replied at once. Now here in the New Living Translation, it says, yes, let's rebuild the wall. So they began the good work. He started out by himself, but God gave him a group. And the King James, I believe it says, arise and build. And God took me back to our foundational scripture. Arise and shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. And then further on, he talks about your sons and daughters are going to come from far. See, see, he's made this thing has been so mapped out and God has given he's been giving me clue after clue, thing after thing, moment showing me. This was you. This has been you. I did not hear wrong. I've been so on point with this thing and hearing from you that now is a reigniting. So man, it's not going to change. The vision is not going to change. Arise and build. Arise and build. Begin to build. Begin to build the people's faith. Begin to build the dream, the vision. Begin to now share this vision. Share this goal. Share about the schools where we want to raise up children to go into these mountains of influence. Begin to share of now health care for people who can't even afford it. Where we have medical facilities, a clinic where we can now minister to the people and to help them. Begin to share of the businesses, of the things that you're to establish. Begin, listen, I'm going to give you, watch this, I'm going to Oh, Lord, that's good, man. OK, y'all got to work with me because it's coming out. Watch this. He says, I'm going to plant you on your own land where you'll never be able to be removed from it. You need land to build a city. And even with its own commerce, its own structure, then you need people to govern the city. You need officials. You need people in position who are royal and ethical who are people in touch with our God, who understand the foundations of faith, who know how to live godly, but think strategically, intellectually, but also understand the spirit, the ways of the spirit and the natural, to know how to go in and govern and to build according to the pattern that the Holy Spirit begins to reveal. What is it that God, man, I'm, I'm preaching, Lord, I hope you're getting this, y'all. <laughs> I'm preaching from an apostolic model, I believe now. This is a different model. This is a model of saying, I've called you to arise in the build. You watching others build when you're supposed to be building. We're supposed to be building. I'm tired of ungodly men and women coming in and taking what's rightfully ours. It's time to arise and build. It's time to arise and build, but you got to build inwardly. You got to get the vision. You got to get the image on the inside, just like in Genesis 11, that they got the image of building a tower to reach the heavens and the people were one. <sighs> this is going to take great momentum, great skill, great intel. Watch this favor, faith, but also partnerships and connections that there were people. If you look at the, um, the third chapter, the third chapter is specifically just dealing with all of the people who started connecting for the rebuilding process. And they and the books, it, it reads and it begins to show how each person was working on their particular gate, their particular wall. This group did this. This group did that. This group. And to see how many people begin to come together off of one man's obedience. Watch this. I can't even fully say it was obedience because it could have. Now, I got to look further into it 
because he saw the need and had a heart to do something about it. And he went to God. It didn't say God initiated this. It said Nehemiah initiated this. That's the part that's like, wait a minute, let me go back, God, because he came to God about this need that he saw. And this is why the scripture even says that God is searching the earth, looking for somebody that he can do great exploits through. Who's going to answer the call? Because if, if I came to you and knocked on the door of your heart, uh, but now you're afraid. And I know, y'all, I know, I get it. It can be a fearful thing to step into a new arena. But God may say you're the person because you got the heart for it. You got the wherewithal. You've been through what you've been through because you can handle tough moments. Tough times don't last, but tough people do. And you've been building. You've been building your character. That's why he says, I need you to start working on character behind the scenes because when I start promoting you, I don't want that small thing that's been an irritant to you all of these years to now be the cause of your downfall as I begin to arise, as you begin to raise up because then it'll begin to deal with the credibility of my call and my kingdom in the earth. You are my representatives, my ambassadors. So now we got to walk as ambassadors now and begin to say, okay, God, what do we need to do from here? Help us with this thing. Man, I hope y'all getting this. I hope y'all receiving this. I feel it. I feel it. I don't feel any resistance. I don't feel, I feel like this, this is a thing where it says, okay, now your job. And what I would do say, go in prayer now. Lord, what is my role? Number one, what is the vision? This is why I'm, I'm sharing these things. I'm giving you bits and pieces. I'm sharing this stuff. And I'm going I'm to I'm 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 begin to call together. One thing God says, I want y'all to pray. I was talking to our intercessors the other night, had a meeting with them. And said, God is calling me to a, a place of deeper prayer. For me, even out of the book of Acts 6, the apostle says, should we leave the word of God to serve tables? So begin to find people that we can delegate this responsibility to so we can give ourselves to the word in prayer. That he says, I'm calling you to me. Not to work in it, but to step out and now start working on it. Because as you come into my presence, I'm going to begin to show you things. And I need you to come out of my presence and begin to now share what you see. Vision. Whew. God showed me this years ago. I've shared it before. I'm going to share it again. And I put things down. I have it written. In my iPad, I even use AI to help me to organize it and put it together. And as I begin to see how to build a city, and I start seeing components of just starting, I'm like, this is doable because now it breaks down a grand vision in small components. How can we start? How can we build according to pattern? I want to build the people. Sometimes you got to deal with their mindset first. Because even when people came out of Egypt, Egypt was still not out of them. And they wandered in the wilderness. And sometimes that's the hardest thing is to get somebody who's been so entrenched and so um, 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 entrenched in poverty and a poverty mindset to get them to start thinking abundance, to thinking it's even possible. And I don't want people to, to die in the wilderness. Whew. Let's arise and build. I know I started talking about the city that I saw years ago. This was in 2011. I had never seen it before. We were about, what's that, about that time, about five years after the ministry started. I was teaching a Bible study. And while I'm preaching, I, I forgot what I was preaching on. This might have been during um, the time I did a, um, it was the last two months of the year, I believe. I was doing the Success Summit series. When I talk about the eight steps to success, I preached on each step for two months for Bible study. And so I went in depth on each account. And <laughs> that's good, Lord. Real quick rabbit trail. 
we ended up, I ended up losing the CDs from that Success Summer series because I was going to turn it into something. And I was so irritated and frustrated. And I remember I preached it again, but I did it in a more condensed version. And one of the things was in me redoing that I started getting a fresh perspective because I gained more knowledge and insight over the years as I've grown personally. And so if I would have still had that, I may have stuck with some of the old models from that time of how my mindset was at that time versus now changing it and adding the new and the fresh and the revelation that he's given me since then. So sometimes don't mourn over the old being lost because the fresh and the new has come. And he's giving you a fresh perspective. Even though the old relationship didn't work, the new one will. Amen. Okay, let me... <laughs> and so as I'm, as I'm preaching... And all of a sudden, I just, I just saw it. It was like a vision. And I saw it. I saw, I saw this city. It had its own commerce, banks, um, own, it was like a centralized bank. It had school system. I mean, nice buildings, nice structure, grocery stores, gas stations. But at the center of the city was the church. And out of it flowed everything else. And I was like, it just looked, and I never even thought about that for, for myself. It, it just, it never even crossed my thought pattern. Like for us to do it, I just know I was called to preach, start a ministry, and that was it right now. I know I wanted to travel the world, preach the gospel, all of that. And I remember saying, I said, somebody, and I started explaining what I was saying, I said, somebody knows it. And I could sense it, I picked it up in my spirit. Somebody here knows what I'm talking about. I was like, who is it? And nobody raised their hand. There was a few people in the Bible study. Nobody raised their hand. I knew what I was getting. Then afterwards, my assistant at the time, she came to me. She said, Pastor, I know exactly what you're talking about. So she began to explain to me about Disney World. Even with Walt Disney began, even understanding his vision, it was just tremendous. But the stuff he even went through. But... She said, and she talked about it, I think it was called Celebration City. And she said it has its own zip code, its own rules, it's like certain things, certain rules. I think even certain tax laws didn't even, as I started um, looking at some of the stuff, certain taxes and tax rules and regulations, even in that area, if I'm not mistaken. Don't quote me on it. But as she started explaining, I said, that's it. That's what I saw. And then I've heard of others. I've heard other preachers talk about building cities hotels and things of that nature, but I never saw them do it. It's like they started in certain areas, but I never heard them talk about it anymore. It's like, God, what is it that you're sharing? What is it that you want done? And it's like, we've so, been so dependent on other people. See, when we read the scripture out of 2 Corinthians 9, 6 through 10, when he talks about being self-sufficient, possessing enough to require no air support. See, I know of ministries that have their own energy supply, water supplies. See, agriculture now is at an all-time high. You, you better watch this. People buying land, growing their own food, building their own stuff. When we, my wife had gone to a meeting with a couple other people. I think one of our board members and somebody else, I, uh, maybe, um, and they went, and with this organization, um, they help churches develop and, and everything. They help you structure all of your, the legal stuff. But they got their model from the Mormon church. The Mormon church has warehouses of grain and storage. The Mormon church is, walk, is functioning off a multi-billion dollar entity. It might have been going to, I don't think it was in the trillions. But I mean, multi-billions were that if anything was to happen, they would be self-sufficient and self-sustained. Think about a person from the hood, just from the country. Now, see, country folk ain't know about some of this stuff because you've been raised to, to live off the land and things of that nature. But think about it on a massive scale. To be the producers, to have your own energy company. See, stuff like that coming up, for me, never even crossed my mind that we could do that. 
You have to be exposed to better. You have to eat at another level to think at another level. Some of you are like, I'm just trying to handle what I'm dealing with at home. See, this is why that's low level stuff. This is why he wants us to get that straight first to have foundation in our life so that we can go and start conquering territories. So we need to begin to build, to build the inward man. This is why God gave me the six areas. See, it's all tying together. The spiritual life, your soul, mind, will, intellect, emotions, and imagination, your physical body, your relationships, how to have right and healthy relationships, whether it's marriage relationships, family relationships, no matter business relationships, no matter what relationships, understanding your financial component, how to walk in generational wealth, then also now learning how to function in your purpose and your calling, how to develop yourself, your skill sets, di um, discovering your gifts, how to move towards it to be successful at it, how to structure infrastructure in your life. All of these areas, he said, if you're good in these areas, you're good in life. So if you start building that, then he gave me a plan. He gave me a system of how to start teaching in those different areas. And it says, okay, now we want to start working on developing the classes and the courses and the curriculums to help people develop so that now you can now be good. And now watch this, that you take the wealth of the wicked, bring it into the hands of the just to now support the vision where we have multi-billion dollars, that we have our own system. So whenever we're ready to do a project, we already self-sufficient. See, that's a whole different thing. You ain't got to go to a secular bank when you the bank. That's a different mindset. So that now means you got to understand certain things. You got to understand certain legislations. So that means now you got to raise up politicians and have people in positions of authority to pass laws to make sure. And so that the hearts and the secrets and see my prayer is that wicked devices will be shut down, but also exposed. See, this is now that office. Now when intercession comes in, we pray from now a different position now. We are praying a different prayer. We are praying for favor with the king, but we also pray that even our enemies, that you'll shut down the plans of our enemies right now and even expose things that need to be exposed and reveal to us that the spirit of, watch this, the spirit of the, the gift of wisdom, word of wisdom, word of knowledge, discerning of spirits. The spirit of knowledge, the spirit of wisdom will be in operation to know how to function, that we will be people who are skilled in these areas, raised up even in universities to be trained as our children are being raised up to now go into these in institutions, to go into places. But watch this, not to go into those institutions, we can raise up our own. And they'll be so trained and equipped that they'll come out with capital to start their own work. Man, you it's just coming out. I'm, we capturing this because it's flowing out of me right now. It's flowing out of me. And I knew as I started talking, like, see, this stuff has been churning in me for years. How are you going to take a boy from the south side of Richmond who don't know nothing about this, Lord? And see, that's what he'll do. All he needs is something. Lord, jeez. All he needs. Whoo. Whoo. Whoo, glory. I felt that. Man, that's whoo, glory. Whoo. Whew. Boy, he felt that, that. Whoa, I felt that. Who I felt like a coat. I felt like something just dropped on me when I just said that. Who glory. And it's like, Lord. Then you feel like, how can this be? <laughs> Seeing I know not. <laughs> Even as with Mary. He says, the Holy Ghost. <laughs> I'm going to give you favor with who you need favor with. But stand strong and I'll surround you with the support system to get it done. See, vision and sometimes vision is not always fully manifested by the person who initiates it, but they're the ones who start it and then pass it on to the next generation to run with it even further and to build and to build and to build and to build. But this thing, it don't have to take that long. The acquisition of land, like never before. Father, grant us land and acquiring of land now. Even the structure, we start learning the structures, 
to how the ministry is to be developed and sustained to sustain this stuff and how to put stuff. See, people do this all the time. So you got to learn the ways and God will give you the wisdom to even learn how to work the laws that are already in place how to develop your companies and your holding companies to put all of your assets in so that nothing is in your name, but it's in the holding company's name. Are you doing stuff? See, all of these type of things. See, structuring, structuring yourself. I'm oh man, there's so much to start dealing with. With the assignment God has given us, we got plenty to do before Jesus come back. We got plenty to do. Plenty to do. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we declare, we decree the supernatural power of God to flood us, to overtake us, to get the job done. We bless you and we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Shore basite robo sokora basi. Shobre basita rabasite. Shokora basi kele boshita na resite. Kobre si kala masite na no broso kon. Bresha ta rebasi kanda sete. Lore basite de do brosho tondo. Hala bresha ta na na bra. I need y'all to begin to pray. Lord, what is my part? What is it that you want me to do? What is the peace? What is the thing? I believe he's going to start revealing it to you. As you begin to now just submit yourself and start thinking from a different place now. Start thinking from a different position. I'm positioned for a kingdom assignment. I'm positioned for kingdom work. Some of you are called to work on the spirit man. But it works on the soul at the same time, too. Some of you might be professionals that help people to develop mental health and wellness. I come against, I saw somebody post it, but I come against the spirit of suicide in the name of Jesus. You have too much to live for. God created you with purpose in mind. I come against it. Right now, Father, we pray a disruption right now. People that are trying to commit suicide, interrupt them now in the name of Jesus. Send somebody to call them by their way to go to their house, wherever they are. Interrupt. Cause the rope to break before it hangs them. No, it, right now, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Yeah, the, let the pills not work. Speed up the metabolism to assist in that process. Whatever... Yeah, Yeah, let not that family give up and pull the plug too soon. Uh, uh let your power now come and that person come off life support and let them be completely healed now and come out of that coma. Shabrama, let signs of life come now in the name of Jesus, for they have an assignment. We refuse to allow them to die now. And we call them back into the land of the living to get their assignment completed. We thank you for it, Father, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Yeah, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you that the assignments will be fulfilled and completed. Yeah, and we'll rejoice forevermore. Reveal unto us political plans and agendas of the wicked ones. Show us what to do. We come against the spirit of division right now. Magnified in hate. Especially in the body of Christ, Lord. Let great reconciliation take place. On both sides, Father. Great anger, great hatred in the hearts of men. Let it melt, be melted by your love. Reveal your love to them. Manifest yourself to those, even that are the heads of these parties, even that are the head of these organizations, even that are spearheading certain de divisive things. Father, show them, show them, show them. What are the things that you would have for them to do? For some have been called to call out things. 
but let it be done, Father, under your hand, with your mighty hand, with great wisdom, great compassion, and great love. Now grant us wisdom, Father, as well, to get this job done in the name of Jesus. We believe it and we receive it. In Jesus' name, amen. There may be somebody under the sound of my voice, you never have made Jesus the Lord of your life, but you want to today. I want you to confess, make, just repeat this prayer after me. If you're not sure that you would die today, that you make it to heaven, there is a no soul salvation. The Bible declares that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God is raising from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So you're going to confess this prayer. And listen, you're going to be born again, man. You got to believe, though. You got to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God that he died for your sins, that he was raised from the dead by God the Father to justify you for your justification or to make you right with God. Okay? That's how you're born again. Now I want you to repeat this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you're the Christ, the Son of the living God. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you were raised from the dead for me. Come inside my heart now, Lord Jesus. I make you the Lord of my life. Say, Satan, I no longer belong to you. Jesus is my Lord, and I'll serve only him all the days of my life. Say, thank you, Heavenly Father, for giving me your son. I'm saved now. I'm born again. I have eternal life. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, watch this. There's an a experience subsequent to salvation called the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking with other tongues. The Bible says when you pray like this, when you pray in other tongues, it's called a heavenly language, that you're not speaking to men, but you're speaking directly to God. Then it says, how be it in the spirit you speak mysteries, hidden secrets and wisdom, not hidden from you, but for you. And that God will begin to reveal these things to you. And so even according to um, Romans 8, 26 through 28, when you pray in the spirit, that the Holy Spirit in you will help you to pray but to help you pray, pray according to the perfect will of God. For there are times sometimes you don't know how to pray for as you ought to. He helps our weaknesses. Infirmities, the Bible says, but it means weaknesses. And so part of that is not knowing how to pray about something. That the Holy Spirit can help you to pray. Just like if I'm, you know, I got a need for something, I might be praying for my children, but I don't know everything that's going on in their life. I can say, Holy Spirit, help me to pray for them about whatever is going on or what needs to be adjusted and corrected and dealt with. And so then I just go into That's a heavenly language. The Holy Spirit is giving me the utterance. He's helping me to pray and he's praying through me, but I'm doing the talking. I'm controlling the talking. It's not like he's forcing me to do it. I'm under my own will and subjection, allowing him to speak through me. That's that process. So when we begin to pray and you want to receive the Holy Spirit, watch this, power comes when he comes. Jesus said to himself, but you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, Samaria, Judea, and other most parts of the earth. And so now we want to pray. Ask the Holy Spirit to come on in and watch him come in. The Bible says, whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them. Believe whatever you desire, which includes the Holy Spirit, believe, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. So when we pray and you ask him to come and to dwell in you, believe that he comes to live in you and he's going to come right on in and then you'll have the ability to speak with other tongues. Now, when we say amen and we do this prayer, the minute we say amen, okay, I don't want you to try to pray in your native language and pray in English or whatever native language you speak in, but allow the Holy Spirit to begin, but you need to begin to speak. And you're gonna sense words come up. And it's like, just begin to flow with that and yield to that. And watch this, it may sound simple or strange to you at that moment because it's not understood with the head. Paul the apostle said, my, my understanding is unfruitful, unfruitful, but I'm praying from my spirit. The most inward part of you, the real you, okay? And so we're going to pray now. Now I want you to repeat this prayer. Say, Holy Spirit, come inside me now. I receive you now. You're now on the inside of me. I now have the ability to speak with other tongues 
as you give me the utterance. In Jesus' name, amen. Now I want you now, come on, real quick. Don't overthink it. Just be, open up your mouth, begin to speak. Whatever words come up. I don't care how simple they sound, how, how foolish it sounds to your head. Just yield in your heart. Holy Spirit is going to help you. You'll become more proficient in it the more you do it. Glory to God. Now watch this. Now stop, 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 stop. Now let's start praying again. Let robo show no. Come on, come on. La rama satana robo sekene. Le reba sitin in the bread. All right. Now go ahead, go ahead, stop. You can settle down. You can settle down. Now watch this. What happens? I'm showing you that you have control of it. The Holy Spirit's not going to make you and force you to do it. But watch this. Just he'll he'll assist you in giving you the words to pray as you begin to pray. All right. Every day I want you to begin to practice. Holy Spirit, help me to pray. And then just start praying. Not in English, not in your native language, but as he'll give you words to begin to speak. And then you'll begin to sense the building on the inside. That's part of the promise of it. Okay. Next, if you don't have a church home and God is leading you to connect to this ministry, I want you to go ahead and send us your information. Um, you can go to our website and check us out, see what we believe. Listen, I believe in church shopping, not necessarily church hopping, but you, listen, take time, figure out, understand who we are, understand the vision, the mission of this ministry. What is it that we're about? You're supposed to do that because you don't want to just submit to any old place, okay? And so because you're submitting your spiritual well-being to the leadership that's established here. And so that, that's the thing we take seriously. That's not a light thing, and we don't take that lightly, okay? And so we want to make sure that we honor God and be an effective servants by serving you. So at this time, there's some information coming up on the screen that may be up there already. You can send an email to us at connect at spiritifier.us. If you want, even want to find out more about the ministry, you can contact us. We'll be more than happy to assist you and have someone from our Connect team to get in touch with you as to how to obtain and maintain what you came to receive. Okay? All right, y'all. At this time, we want to honor God in our giving. The information is coming up on the screen. As you give, it supports the work. It supports what we do. I believe even according to scripture that the people's giving supported the work of God, the kingdom of God. God has blessed you. He has increased you more and more. And it's, I believe, I believe it's an obligation, but yet we want to do it out of a love and a commitment to God. Even in the book of Genesis, when Abraham, when Abram gave, before his name was even changed to Abraham, that he came from the battle of Chedorlaomer and he gave 10% of the spoils. He tithed to God by giving it to the high priest Melchizedek. And then the Bible says there was bread and wine. There was communion that took place. And so um, Melchizedek said, blessed be Abram, servant of the most high God. Okay. And so Abram have given him the tithe. And so now Jesus in Hebrews is after the order, a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. And so he receives though, he receives our tithes and offerings and gifts of love. And so the blessing has been released by Jesus and through faith in Jesus, because even in Ephesians one and three, it says um, we've been blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places by Christ Jesus. In the book of Galatians 3.13, that we've been blessed because blesses every man, uh, curses every man that hangs on the tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through faith in Jesus. So through faith in Jesus, we receive the blessing. I want you to say, I have the blessing. I have the blessing. And because I have the blessing and he has blessed me through faith in Christ, and he even says, I've been blessed with faith for Abraham, that Abraham gave tithes of all. And so I received that blessing that Abraham even received then because Abraham was my father in faith. And now I receive Jesus as my Lord. This blessing is on my life and I'm functioning in this blessing, which is God's empowerment for prosperity and success. And so because you bless me, I'm going to honor you, God with what you bless me with. You see, you see how that works now? And so now this is so blessed because he's blessed me. I honor him. I'm blessed coming in and I'm blessed going out. I'm the head and not the tail. And as I give, it'll be given to me again, good measure, pressed down, shaking together and running over that God is going to start causing men to give them my bosom. See, when I come from that attitude, I'm looking, okay, where, where can I sow? Lord, what is it that you want me to sow? How much do you want me to give today? 
So whatever he tells you to do, do it. There's information coming up on your screen as to how you can um, give, um, different means by which uh, you can do so. You can scan the QR code, it'll take you to a secure page where you can sew. Um, if you still feel more comfortable, you wanna mail in um, your gifts. Um, the information is on the screen. You can send it to our PO box. You can make your checks out to SOFF. That's sufficient for Spirit of Fire Fellowship. You spell million, M-I-L-L-I-O-N. Amen. We got much to do. And then you spell billion, B-I-L-L-I-O-N. Glory to God. You can transfer that. When you start getting that kind of money, go on transfer. Amen. So we can get this thing done. We got much to get done. So, Father, we thank you. As the people sow and as they give, as we give, Father, we thank you right now that you're honoring us. We thank you because we're honoring you. And we thank you right now for the full manifestation of this blessing producing in our lives. We bless you and we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, y'all, I'm out of time, but certainly not out of message. I want you to do this. Take this word, go over it, meditate on it, think about it, ponder it, pray about it. And we're going to continue dealing with this. Um, I'm not finished. I still got some more to deal with. And so... Um, Today, I just wanted to establish this. Man, this, 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 I, I enjoyed this today. Um, oh, we got the truck up. We're going to stretch forth our hands. This is our ministry truck that we're believing for, debt free. And so I want you to stretch your hands towards us and say, In the name of Jesus, we believe we receive our ministry truck paid for in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Praise God. Praise God. Glory to God. All right, y'all. May the hand of God be upon you. May God's grace and peace rest on you. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Enjoy your family. Go in peace. See you next time.